Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome back to this Solid Principle series. Today we're going to be discussing the L in Solid, and that is the Liskov Substitution Principle. So once again, here are the five Solid Principles. You guys can just skip ahead a bit if you don't want to read through this again. But I just want to make sure that you guys remember and get this stuck in your head. So S is for Single Responsibility. O is for Open Close. L is for Liskov Substitution. I is for Interface Segregation. D is for dependency inversion. So let's take a look at the Liskov substitution principle. So the Liskov substitution principle states derived classes must be substitutable for their base class. So let's take a look at this a little bit further and examine what does this principle actually mean. So for example, let's take a parent and a child class. Then we can have another class named world which calls the child class. The class world should be able to swap the child class for the parent class without having the code modified. So why should we follow this principle? Once again, it is to make code easier to maintain, it's to prevent from code rot, and it is to make code reusable and flexible. Okay guys, so now that you went over a bit of theory, let's take a look at the code itself. At the moment right here we have a parent class called main with a method handle file. We then have a child class which extends main and also has a handle file method. And then we have a separate class here called other but it also extends main and has a function handle file. Now um, at the bottom here we have just some code that's running the handle file method from class other. And we just have to, if we run this, we'll get added to DB, which is what we want to see. And that's from the main class here, added to DB. So um, on top here, we have a whole bunch of logic that would theoretically or hypothetically be adding data to a database. And then we'll just return, uh, you could return true, you can return string, whatever you would prefer to uh, return. But in this specific example, we're returning added to DB, which is great, it's a string. In our child class here, we have uh, the method handle file. So that means let's try to swap out um, other extends, not main, but child. Let's get that right. Whoa. Right, here we go. So let's run that. Okay, and now in this example, we get string four dead. So that is completely different to just a simple string here. What's happening is the process is being killed and that is not what is happening with this method here. So in this code, if this was in a real world example, um, we would have to change this code here because we would have to deal with now this whole uh, die. And that's not what the Liskov substitution principle wants you to achieve. What it wants to do is if we swap child, uh, main for child here, we, we don't have to change this code. That's the whole point. So um, in this example, data is not going to be added to the database because, of course, it's dying. But what I'm actually trying to get through to you guys here is that if this was returning an array, this also needs to return an array, not die. And um, the reason for that, like I said, is now you're going to have to modify this code here. And that's not what solid principles about. If you take a look at the open close, you need to make sure your code is open for extension, but also close for modification. And if you're extending stuff, make sure that your child class and main class can be interchangeable. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that this clears up the Liskov substitution principle for you. Please stick around for interface segregation. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe.